Hi dear friends, uh, my name is Meghna Mitra Gotri. Um, I am a watercolor artist and uh, what I will do for you today is a little watercolor painting of violas. I have a very rough uh, a pencil sketch here. Um, so I intend to make uh, yellowish, orangish uh, <laughs> and a little bit of purple violas and uh, we'll see how they turn out. My website is www.daintlymade.com. Uh, you will find more information about me on my website. Um, I also take online classes and uh, that information is also periodically updated on my website. So let's get started. What I'm using here is an Arches uh, 140 pound um, cold press watercolor paper. Um, I will be juggling between two brushes. These are uh, Princeton round number four and number zero watercolor brushes. And uh, what I have here is um, a palette that has Daniel Smith paints. Uh, I really love these colors a lot. Um, so I will use uh, uh, Daniel Smith paints and um, one of the colors that is not on this palette but is on this one is a carbazole violet which i will also use in this painting today so let's get started so uh, we will be applying different techniques here and i will explain these techniques as we go along so first what i'm trying to do is uh, i'm just going to apply water on three of the five petals the left, right, and the ones at the bottom. Just a little bit of water. And we are going to apply a wet on wet technique. Okay, so now I have a wet paper in all of these areas. And we're going to use New Gamboge, which is uh, one of my favorite colors. It's a very bright ye yellow and I'm going to use that. So at the start of the painting, it's going to be very loose. Just like that. Now while this is still uh, wet, just a little bit here as well, so it's, you know, watercolor always dries much lighter than what we uh, see right at the very beginning. So while this is wet, I'm going to go ahead and put in a little bit of orange. I have that color also in this palette right here. <laughs> just, just at the edge. And you will notice because the uh, paper is still very wet, uh, the colors just bleed into the yellow. And that is typically what happens in a wet on wet technique. So you don't have to do the entire petal you will see magic happening right when you apply wet paint onto the wet paper. I just like to use an old rag like this uh, between wipes. I go back to my new gamboge, a very sunny yellow. And I'm, I'm just doing a little bit of back and forth. A 
All right. At this point, I'd also like to take a little bit of uh, red. Now, there are no rules. I'm just playing with the colors until I'm happy with uh, how they turn out. All right, at this point in time, I'm just going to allow the uh, all the yellows and the reds to dry. Uh, meanwhile, let's go ahead and put in a little bit of carbazole violet to these top petals right here. You know, so timing is really everything <laughs> when it comes to this medium. Um, I find a lot of people who are, uh, you know, really scared to <laughs> paint with watercolors because, um, you know, because of the control that the medium uh, needs. But, you know, it's very, very doable um, once you understand how uh, water behaves on the paper and you know just a matter of practice you see how that yellow has kind of bled into the violet I kind of like that I, I really like these little little you know faded effect and that is the beauty of a watercolor. See how this yellow bled into the violet. Of course, for some of them, I might just have to go back later and mend, but uh, I'm just not going to disturb that too much at this point in time. And, and, and really, I think um, a lot of times I have to tell my students, you know, don't be worried of those little um, accidents here and there, you know. You can always make them happy. <laughs> so um, as a part of my classes, I also teach people how to uh, correct if, you know, if they feel they're not happy uh, with something that they have done. I give them tips on how they could mend that. But it's all right, you know. And you see these little white lines that I'm leaving? That's that's just to show the break in the two petals. Again, there there, there are really no you know specific shapes I'm looking for. I'm just having fun with the colors. Okay. Now, what I might occasionally also do just to have a little bit of change um, or to maybe get rid of the boredom of violet, I might just go ahead and add a little bit of ultramarine blue um, just to bring about a change in the shade. I do a lot of dotted motion in my technique um, and I'd, I'd love to see what happens at every spot when I <laughs> when I do a dot I'd love to see what what happens I mean that that's how I study <laughs> this medium it's just back and forth and you see how this violet bled into the yellow that's all right we can always go back to it and mend for example what I might just do is um, I have no paint on my brush right now, so I just go ahead and take a slightly moist uh, uh, brush and 
I would just wipe away that paint just a little bit. Just like that. And I'll use a paper towel to just dab it. That's all. See, one doesn't have to be scared at all. Sim similarly here. And then I will wait for this petal to dry and maybe go back and intensify uh, the colors here a little bit more with yellows and reds. Um, it, you see how the yellow is, you know, it looks a little more lighter than the first time we applied. So that's why we will go back and apply a second and third coat of paint until we are happy with the way it looks. See, so I just wiped the paint, dabbed it with paper towel and I go back. So we move on. I think this paper is already dry at these petal areas. So I'm just gonna go ahead and apply more of uh, the yellows and the oranges. So it's, you know, it's all about back and forth until um, you're happy with the intensity of the colors. Sometimes I tend to go a little overboard, <laughs> but uh, uh, that's all right. Okay. Just a little bit of red. Okay, now, you know, I want these two flowers to be uh, the focal point of this entire painting. So, uh, you know, more of the details and intensity in color is going to be for these two flowers. And uh, some of them, I will probably just leave them light um, as if they were way back. So a concept of receding value, S something that's at the back, you don't want that to look very prominent so you just don't want to you know have too many details back there so let's go ahead and intensify these two flowers right here All right, at this point in time, um, we'll go ahead and maybe intensify the, uh, the capsule violet a little bit more. And I'm not going to cover the entire petal. It's just, you know, just some flat strokes here and there, that's all. So we, we do want to leave a few light spots um, to define the value. Okay. You know, you'll notice that I'm not mixing anything on my palette. I let the paper do all the mixing for me. Uh, and that's kind of fun. I love to see what the paper does once you apply paint on it. And you know, 
and when you use the right set of paper and paint, um, you really get to see the true effects of watercolors. All right, at this point in time, I will just let the flowers be and we will work a little bit on the background and uh, the greens and that's when I have loads of fun because <laughs> I love I love painting greens so um, first I'll go ahead and define a few leaves and then I go ahead and work on the background and once the background um, dries completely we will go ahead and fill in more leaf shapes so let's see how that's going to turn out so for the greens I primarily use um, sap green and uh, to that I will keep adding colors like um, uh, New Gamboge or a lemon yellow, I would mix sap green and um, burnt umber, I would use sap green and uh, quinacridone sienna and quinacridone gold. So, uh, you know, I, and, and I don't plan this, I just, I just go with the flow. Um, so let's make a few leaf shapes. extremely loose light strokes and I'm just defining the leaf shapes I'm not being very rigid and if you see I, I haven't drawn any of those leaves I'm just I'm just doing a freehand painting So at this point in time, I have used sap green. Let me go ahead and mix um, or add a little bit of ultramarine blue and let's see what happens. See how beautifully while the paper is still wet, um, the color just, just blends. And I'm not trying to cover the entire leaf with um, ultramarine blue, just, just, just at the edge, that's all. Just here. Oops, we got a little bit of green there. That's fine. I just go and lift the paint just like that. Just like that. And I would dab to make sure that the it, that it doesn't bleed further. The paper needs to be dry. So that's it. And we'll go back and work on it a little later. I'd like everyone to try this medium you know um, and uh, my online classes are uh, catered towards beginners um, and uh, I just want everyone to be comfortable with the medium have fun with it and yeah okay let's go ahead and drop a little bit of burnt umber and see what that does along with the sap green. So it gives a difference. So I typically use sap green and ultramarine blue and sap green and um, burnt umber to get the darker shades of leaves. Okay, we will wait for these to dry. We can make a few more um, leaves and maybe this time I will try to put in a little bit of yellow, quinacridone gold, Okay, let's see. So this is New Gamboge, again, a color that we've used on the petals. And it just gives a nice um, shade, like a warm shade. Right, so again, these are very loose uh, shapes. We will go back and add more uh, coats of paint. What I'd like to do now is um, 
let's go ahead and do uh, maybe a couple of more coats on these two flowers right here so you, you see the back and forth process that uh, keeps going on throughout the painting <laughs> okay so let's go ahead and work on the background so background I'm going to again use um, the wet on wet technique and um, I'm just going to be very loose so I first just apply water this is just plain water and then I just go ahead and drop pigments like this is a sap green I would go ahead and drop Conacridone gold just just have fun with it and of course you want to make sure that you use the colors that complement the main subjects uh, and your entire painting so I might occasionally use a blue just yeah and just you know let that blend with the rest of the paper and if you feel you're drying out just feel the need to uh, add more water just go ahead and do that just like that All right, now that we're done with the first um, coat of the paints at the background, again, I have used, uh, so first I had to wet the uh, entire background region um, and I applied a little bit of sap green, a little bit of thalo blue. Uh, this is, uh, you know, just a very light um, quinacridone sienna, some uh, quinacridone gold and yellow ochre. Uh, so these are the colors I used for you know the first coat of background and what I'm going to do at this point in time is uh, let's go ahead and work a little bit with again the two flowers <laughs> I'm going to add a little bit of um, the carpazole violet right here to suggest the shadow of this petal um, right here. So a very diluted carpazole violet, it's just a hint of it, just like that. Just blending if, if I see any hard edges I just go ahead and soften them and this process becomes really easy when you use the right kind of paper
Again, I got that blue onto the yellow. I'm just going to just lifting that up. Every time I lift, I try to use a paper towel to just dry that area a little bit, just like that. Okay. Now let's um, work on the center. I'm going to take uh, just a, you know, dot of sap cream at the top edge of the center just like that oops yeah these are the accidents <laughs> that's okay alright so if you feel that the green is you know uh, bleeding too much into the yellow and you know, as, as if you're not able to see the yellow at all, just go ahead and lift from the bottom, revealing a little bit of that yellow. Right. Now, in order to reveal the center here, I will have to probably darken the surrounding area. So I'm just going to use uh, a little bit of yellow and then a little bit of red in order to reveal the center. Like that. And then I'll just allow it to mix with the rest of the petal, the reds. So the paper is still slightly wet. Let me try and see if I can uh, make more leaf shapes here. And you see how light these leaves have turned, the ones which we de deliberately try to make dark with the um, ultramarine blue and the um, burnt umber, we are going to further darken them. Let's go ahead and make a really light leaf by applying the concept of negative painting. So let's do, let's do that right here and I'll tell you what I mean. So negative painting is a technique where you paint around a subject to reveal it. So for example, if I want to just create a light leaf right here, I would just make an outline of that leaf and then paint all around it. See, 
just like that and then I just blend with the rest of the paper the background let's make another leaf um, right here so I do the same thing and I take a uh, a shade darker than what is already on the background and in this case I'm just using a sap green and I create the leaf shape and just paint all around it like that Now at this point, let me go ahead and use the negative painting technique to create some light stems here and here as well. So all I'm doing is I'm taking again a little bit of sap cream and I, I want the stem of this flower coming down. So I just do this. I create that line and I paint around it again, negative painting. Just like that. See? So as much as possible, I try not to use white, black, um, and a masking fluid in my paintings unless I really have to. I just try using uh, the negative painting painting technique to reveal all the lighter uh, parts of the composition. Do, let's do a couple right here so I just draw I literally just draw lines just like that maybe I'll do one here as well and then I just paint around the lines between Taylor blue, sap green, ultramarine gold, you know, this is typically what my um, palette looks like most of the time. Okay, now you see these hard edges, I'm just going to get them to disappear with a little bit of water and I'm just blending it into the background of the paper. Likewise at the bottom as well. I'm not very happy with this leaf right here, so I'm just going to define that a bit more. That's better. going to do is uh, we're going to allow this painting to dry and uh, when we come back we will go ahead and um, de define a couple of more shapes um, adjust the lights and the darks and uh, finish it off with uh, um, a few couple of lines around the center of these flowers and yeah so let's meet after this is dry 
Okay, now that the paper is a little dry, uh, I'm going to switch over to the zero number brush uh, just to complete these little spots inside. So we want to give an impression that there are a lot of leaves in between and behind the flowers as well. So let's go ahead and define some of those lines and also fill in some of the empty spaces that are more white at this point in time. So I'll just go ahead and mix on my palette a sap green and um, so if I want these um, leaves to appear lighter than, than the background then I need to make these in-between spots really dark. I'm also going around the petals and getting the green a little bit in between the petals just to show that there is a break. And you adjust the lights and the darks. See, so by adding this dark, really dark mix of green and burnt umber and ultramarine blue, what I've done is I have created a barrier between these two leaves so they are seen very clearly. I'm just darkening this leaf. So here is where, so at, at this point of the painting is when I start the details. And you have something going on here. I know that this needs to be purple because um, this petal is a part of this little flower right here. So let's go ahead and take that carbazole violet and fill this entire petal. See how I corrected that, <laughs> that purple that went into the petal? I just extended that purple so now it gives an impression that this flower is behind this one so i'm just going to keep working on those little details now We don't want this leaf to be stark white, so I'm just adding a little bit of value by making it dark, maybe on just one side. And same thing on this leaf right here. I'm just lifting a little bit of paint from here and there to reveal the uh, lighter parts of the leaves. And give it some tone. I just felt the need for <laughs> leaves, you know, so, until someone told me, okay, stop, I think that's enough. You have it, you've got enough leaves now, but then I go back and say, no, I think I need a few more leaf shapes right here because this flower is really light and the background is too light. We need something to, um, you know, differentiate between the two and to have a little bit of contrast. So I would just go ahead and add the same quinacridone um, sienna and sap green and let's see what we get I'm moving back to my uh, zero number brush I 
see this white spot here this needs to get filled in with the carbazole violet just some values lights and darks I'm going around the edge of the flowers, the edge of the petals. Just a little bit of details on the flowers to show you know folds and creases See this hard edge here? I don't quite like this. I'm just softening by applying a little bit of water. That's all. Just like that. Yeah, I see a white spot here. Let me just fill that up with a little bit of sand cream. Painting is, I think, I would, I would call it almost finished. Maybe what I might want to do is, um, I might want to just lift this and see if I can reveal a little more of the center. So let's see if we can lift that. I'm just applying water and just dabbing water and dabbing okay now what I will do is I'll do the same thing that we did we First did a yellow and then we just dropped a little bit of green sap cream right now in order to make the center pop up even more I'm just going to use some red and it's I'm just defining this a little bit more and later we're gonna have a few lines coming uh, a few dark purple lines and that's going to further define the center so I want to show a break between this petal of this flower and this flower so I'm taking a little bit of red just defining this petal and that instantly gives a break between the flower here and, and this one right here.
I'm just drawing a few veins in the edges. It's just very little red on my brush. You can hardly see it. It's really, really um, light. It's an extremely diluted red. And it, it's as if you're barely touching the, um, the paper. Okay, let me just see if I can zoom in and show you. Okay, now we have some negative stems here. Uh, this one seems a little out of place, so let me see if I can lift up to reveal this line a little bit more. I could also do that by doing some negative painting and creating some leaf shapes. I know we have enough leaves, but... <laughs> Okay, there we go that's that's a lot better let's also make a few positive um, um, stem shapes um, so I will just take some burnt umber and just create a few random stems just like that it's okay if one goes over the other that's absolutely fine and maybe a few branches. Some dark, some light. The ones that are dark, that just means that they're closer to us. And the ones that appear lighter, it means they're farther. go ahead and define some of the veins, veins on the leaves, like this, just random lines. Yeah, I think, I think we're almost there. I'm just now going to take some carbazol violet and just make dark lines towards the center just like that Okay. 
okay you know what i did this was not supposed to be here because this <laughs> this petal belongs to this flower right here so i'm just going to lift the paint and, and that's it Now, all that's left to do is sign and uh, I'm done. Um, so if you saw, you know, um, we, we used a lot of wet on wet technique. I'm, I'm, I'm just defining a little bit of a center right here. Uh, we did a lot of wet on wet technique. We went back and forth until we had the values right. And um, we also uh, used negative painting as a technique to um define lighter shades of uh, leaves and how to get them when you already have a background how to bring about light colored leaves and um yeah so i i hope you enjoyed this video give it a try see what you think um once again my name is meghna mitra gotri and uh, i'm a watercolor artist um and uh, if you want to take my um uh, online classes please visit www.daintlymade.com and um, you will find uh, all my events and workshop information right there and um, there is a contact uh, page uh, on my website so write to me let me know what you're working on what you're doing currently and uh, um, and um, all the very best so I hope you enjoyed this demonstration and I'll try to put in um, more videos. Um, so thank you so much for staying with me. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, I hope you keep painting. Thank you. Bye-bye.